Granny, you're not in the house. How's everybody doing on the count of three? No matter what campus you're on, I need you to do something for me. I want you to look at the person next to you, and I want you to do two things. Somebody say two things. I want you to look at them and say, what's up? And give them a round of applause. Ready? One, two, three. What's up? And give them a round of applause. Amen. Man, first of all, I want to say congratulations to all the parents because you did it. You made it through the first week of school. Come on, parents. Man, that is absolutely incredible. You know, back to the routine of packing lunches and the blessing of arguing with your children every morning to get out of bed, get out of bed. Get out of bed about 13 times, yeah. Maybe your kids are excited right now because it's the first, second, first week of school. But, um, yeah, that really wasn't the thing in my house. But anyway, congratulations to you. And also, what a great day in the Lord's house. Amen. Can a brother get an amen? Amen. Before we jump to our new series, which is, yes, it's right here on my shirt, and all the warriors said, yes, right? I want to take a second to remind you of the two closing points last week as we ended our series, Family Values. And the reason why I wanted to go back and remind you of those two points is because maybe you weren't able to be with us last week, last weekend of, of summer vacation. I know this is Labor Day weekend as well, but I do want to just go back and talk about those those two G's really quick. The first one is this, a Granny United Church is going to hold tight to the gospel. A family value is this, the gospel. On a count of three, let me hear everybody on every campus say the gospel. Ready? One, two, three. The gospel. Great job, Haverhill. Great job, Lawrence. All right? I campus, you can type the words the gospel in the, in the comments. The gospel. Why? Because life is short and eternity is long. And Salem Saturday, Salem Sunday, listen to me, everybody. The other G is this, grace. What we're going to do at Granny United Church is we're going to extend to people what Jesus has freely extended to us. Listen, if it weren't but for the grace of God, if you are grateful for the life-changing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, Put your hands together. Come on, Granite. Come on, Haverhill Lawrence. I campus Salem Sunday, Salem Saturday, and a campus coming near you soon. I'm just telling you. All right, we also learned something very important during this series. We have these granitisms. Somebody call them pastorisms. <laughs> these, these kind of these sayings. Some of them are one-liners, but things that we repeat again and again and again and, uh, and again, right? And, and so we tweaked one of those, this, this series, last series, and he said, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? And where, correct, where does the Bible say it? Right, Because we not only know, want to know what thus saith the Lord, we want to make sure that we know where God said it. So when we get into these conversations, we don't just give certain things that we've heard at church or we read in a book. We want to say, hey, I want to take you to God's holy word. Can I get an amen? Come on. Amen. Listen, and talking about kids, let's, let's go back to that for a second. Maybe you'll be able to relate to this as a parent, and maybe you can relate to it because you remember when your parents said this to you. How many of you remember this, or you've said this to your kids? If you would have just done what you were asked to do, you would have gotten this done a lot quicker, and life would have been gone a lot smoother for you. Come on, how many? How many? If you would have just listened, if you would have just done what you asked, you wouldn't be so frustrated. You wouldn't be so stressed. You would already be on the other side. Can a brother get a uh-huh? Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I remember raising my kids and, and, and now Ray, going through some of the same things with my grandkids, asking them um, to do things that, well, maybe they didn't want to do. I mean, you know, there's that. Or, or, or maybe I asked them to do something and they just kind of, you know, roll their eyes. And instead of doing what they were asked to do, when they were asked to do it, they, they delayed in doing it. No pointing, no pointing in the house of God. Or maybe, uh, you know, I come back around and, and I go back and check and, and they just didn't do it. They just refused to do it. All of which cause frictions and problems. Whether, whether they didn't want to do it, delayed doing it, just refused to do it. Listen, I remember looking at my kids and I would say to them, what about what I asked you to do was unclear? 
All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm preaching. I'm preaching this weekend. Come on, parents. Give me an amen. And then I will follow up and ask them, do you think what I do you think that I would ask you to do anything uh, that that I thought you were incapable of doing? Or do you think I would ask you to do something that that potentially could harm or hurt you? To which they would just look at me with, with that, that, that stare, and I would look back at them and say, Absolutely not. You're more than capable. You you just need to get up. You need to Obey the voice of your father, <laughs> and you need to get it done. And then I'd reassure them that just because I ask them to do difficult things at times, it isn't because they don't have the ability to do them. It's because I wanted them to see at times that they are capable of things that they don't even realize they're capable of. I wanted to stretch them. I wanted them to grow. I just needed them to trust me. I just needed them to trust me as their father, as their dad, as their parent to say, listen, I got you, but you're going to have to be at a place where you trust me. Is this anybody or just me? Anybody else? Come on. You've had these same conversations with your kids and your grandkids, right? Come on. Now you're in church. Tell the truth. All right. All right, so we've all been there. And here's what I inevitably have said to them. Sometimes, uh, whether they realize it or not, yes, somebody say yes. Yeah, everybody, every campus. Ready, Haverhill, Lawrence, iCampus, type it in the comments, Salem Saturday, Salem Sunday, on the count of three, you want to hear everybody say yes. One, two, three, yes. Sometimes yes is actually easier than no. Because, and I understand this, and yes always comes down to trust. Can I trust the person who has given me direction in my life, whether I understand it or not, whether it makes sense or not, can I trust the person who is speaking to, is speaking into me? Uh, giving me direction. Tr can I trust that I will, that, can I trust a person that they are not in this to harm me? Can I trust that that person has my best interests in mind? Can I trust that I know that that person knows things that I, that I may not know? Can I trust that that person has been where I haven't been and they've seen what I haven't seen? Can I trust that I, that that person wants something for me and not from me? Can I trust uh, that person enough to allow them to speak into my life and to lead me when it comes to man doing life when it comes to breakthrough when it comes to growing when it comes to blessing it truly does come down to trust and truth is you know there's a funny video that I that I found and, and maybe maybe you can relate to this um, about about brilliant kids check out this video you guys we don't mean to brag but our teenagers are geniuses. They literally know everything. Like every time I go to try to tell them something that has taken me 45 years to learn, they respond with, I know. People fly me all over the world. They pay me to give them advice. Every time I bring it to my kids. It's true. They respond, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just know we're amazing parents. We're so lucky. Oh, come on. How great was that video? How many of you have a, a brilliant child? Come on, who knows it all, right? I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey, listen, if we're not careful when it comes to our Father which art in heaven, we can be a lot like um, the kids that those parents were talking about in, the, in that video. And the truth is, what we want as parents is the same thing that our Father, which art in heaven, wants from us. You know what that is? Trust. T-R-U-S-T. He wants us to trust him as he leads us. Many of you, a few weeks ago on Facebook Live or on my Facebook page, I asked you just to, to share a scripture verse that, that was speaking to your heart. And I can't, uh, many of you, I just, it was amazing to see how many of you wrote down Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Now let me read to you Proverbs 3, 5 through 10. Here's what the Bible says. It's a great, it's a great passage of scripture 
on trust. Ready? Proverbs 3, 5. Trust God right out of the gate. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything on your own. Oh, if we can just wrap our minds around that. I'm reading this out of the message, by the way. The message translation is really a paraphrase, but it's so good. I mean, it's so much, you know, when we speak to our kids, like, will you just trust me? I know you don't understand everything. Will you just trust me? Will you stop arguing? Will you stop doing the pushback? And right here in God's word, our Father in heaven says, hey, trust God. Trust him from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Verse 6. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Verse 7. Ready? If the words are bolded, underlined, or capitalized, you read them. Don't read it with me. Assume that you know it all. <laughs> go back to the TikTok video, right? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know, I know, oh, I know, God, oh, I know. And sometimes you want to tell God, I know more than you know. Oh, God, I get this. Oh, God, here's what I want you to know that maybe you, God, don't know. Verse 7, don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Run to God from evil. Verse 8. Your body will glow with health. This is the result of yes. There is something on the other side of yes, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to be talking about this church family all month. All right? And here's some of the blessing. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the very best. And guess what? Again, on the other side of yes, your barns will burst and your wine vats will brim over. Can a brother get an amen? Some of you are like, I ain't got no barns and I certainly don't have wine vats. You know what he's talking about? That you will be blessed beyond measure. That you, you are going to have blessings. Your cup will overflow. But Proverbs chapter 3 literally is telling us to, to slow down and try to wrap our minds around the Father knows best. That our Father in heaven can be trusted. That, that I need to listen to my Father, not just hear my Father's voice. I need, I, I need to understand that my Father, my Father in heaven, our Father which are in heaven has my best interests in mind. That, that, that is just good to trust my Father in heaven. That there's blessings in obedience. That, that, that to honor my Father is actually to obey my Father's voice and to give my Father my best always starts with trust and yes. If you're with me, come on campuses, put your hands together. Come on, amen. I love this passage of scripture. It all goes back to the worship song we sang a few minutes ago. Take you at your word. Come on, somebody. And there's some lyrics in there. Here, here's a couple of the lyrics. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road, but listen, that leads to life, and I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide, because you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, check it out. I'll believe it. You sang this a few minutes ago. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. What's that all about? It's about trust that leads to yes, and on the other side of yes is blessing. Come on, somebody say amen. You see, this is the key to yes, making your mind up to trust and take Father at his word. I mean, listen, finding God's will is not the difficult part. Obeying and following God's will, now that'll challenge you, but we got to get to the point where we make a decision. We've got to decide that even when I don't understand what I don't understand, man, may be complicated, but who is, who is telling me isn't that complicated? That, that my Father in heaven can be trusted. And when I get to the point where I can take God at his word, then before I even know the question, the answer will be yes. And that's what this series is going to be about because our Father wants something for you. And by the way, that doesn't always mean it's going to be easy. 
No, 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 no. Because our lives are for his glory. And Father wants to use us in ways through, through blessing at times, praise God, and even in dark and difficult times to bring him glory. Just telling you, it's just the way life works. And too many Christians think that God lives for us, but he doesn't, gang. He doesn't. I'm grateful that our Father blesses his children. This isn't about us. Man, he blesses us. We're blessed to be a, yeah, you know it. That's, that's why the goodness of God is poured out on us, so we can be an extension, reflection, expression of Jesus Christ in our world. We live for him. Christianity, let me just show you a picture here. Christianity isn't a cruise ship. It's a battleship. Some of you think that, man, when you, when, when you said yes to Jesus, it was all about, you know, uh, being on this cruise ship and, and being entertained and having all the food you want and all the fun and just going from fun port to fun port. No, 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 no. It's a battle. We are in a spiritual warfare. You weren't put on a cruise ship, ladies and gentlemen. You were put on a battleship. Come on, somebody say Amen. And that's why yes requires discipline because it ain't easy. And if you've been paying attention at all at my social media, I've been saying a lot, uh, this a lot lately, that discipline will take you where motivation can't because discipline doesn't care jack about your feelings. I'm not motivated to go to church. doesn't matter. doesn't matter if I feel like it. It, it's a part of the discipline of my life. I'm going to be in Father's house worshiping my Father. So what I said on Facebook on Friday of this past week, you know, that these are the reasons I don't go to church. The reasons I do go to church is grace, mercy. I mean, I've been saved, redeemed, restored. They're the, they're the, the disciplines in my life, not the motivations. I mean, I discipline myself because of the goodness of God in my life. And now that I've, I've covered and we've talked about trust and a little bit about discipline. Here's what I want to do. And this is really important because there are some real practical takeaways on how you can take the Word of God and apply it to your everyday life. Why is this important? Because the Word of God is not for information. It's for transformation only through, yeah, application. So on the count of three, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands together, Haverhill, Lawrence, I Campus, Salem Saturday, Salem Sunday. And I want you to put your hands together and invite your campus pastors and leaders up. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, get a little laugh for our leaders today. Amen? Amen. God bless you as you continue to study. Wow, what an incredible message so far. And those are such huge principles to put into practice in our life because Discipline and trusting God in all things leads to God's best, which is far better than anything that we could do on our own. And you see, that's true when it comes to things like our health, our finances, marriage, dating, parenting. And it's certainly true when it comes to our faith and our trust in God. You see, so the question we're going to have to wrestle with all series is, can I take Father at his word? Because you see, living the disciplined Christian life, initially, you may not see what God is doing. But eventually, if you continue on the right path, you will reap a harvest if you do not grow weary which leads me to the Galatians 6, 9. It says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we'll, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. In the next few weeks in the series, we're going to look at people's stories in the Bible that, and see what happened in their life on the other side of their yes. You see, people who took Father at his word, people who disciplined their lives according to Father's plans, people who trusted Father's heart when they couldn't see his hand, and people who refused to quit, not knowing the what, but they certainly knew the who. 
And maybe you're here today and you're not on, you're not in a relationship with Jesus. And maybe today you want to say yes to Jesus and start trusting the Lord. And the greatest reason we can trust the Lord is found in Romans 5, verses 8 through 11. It says, But when God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. In verse 11, it's huge. It says, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. <clears throat> so maybe you're here today and you want to say yes to Jesus. It's simple. It's just praying a prayer and letting God know that you want to start this relationship with him. So if that's you today, prayer is not a magical prayer. It's, it comes from the heart. Just pray a prayer like this. Quietly where you are, God, today, I know that I'm not saved. I know I'm not in a relationship with you yet. But today, Lord, I want to make that switch and start on this Christianity journey. Lord, I know I'm not going to know everything. But today, I'm making the first step to turn my life from what it was to turning to trusting in you. Lord, come into my life, be my savior, and today, start changing me for you. And if you said that prayer today, we are so excited for you. This is the best decision you could have made in your life. And we want to have you do two things. First thing, just put a hand emoji in the comments. Just let our team know here today that you said yes to Jesus and you started this relationship with Christ. And the second thing is, there's going to be a link on the screen. If you would go here after service, fill out the form on there. This is going to let the leadership team see that you made this decision. They're going to reach out to you. They want to celebrate with you and talk about your next steps in this new relationship with God. But hey, Christians, what we want you to do this series, we want you to buckle up and be present. Because not only is yes honoring and bringing glory to God, it's also the key to your best life. Because you see, when fear, lack of god confidence, lack of discipline keeps us in the know, we miss out on the abundant life that God wants and he desires for us to have. Because, you know, there is no better place to be than centered in God's will and plan for our lives. And there's no better place to be than firmly standing under his authority and under his protection. So we encourage you, be here every week for this series. You're not going to want to miss this because you're going to want to start having that answer of yes. No matter what God has for you, we want your answer to be yes. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. Just thank you for letting us come together to start learning more about saying yes, no matter the question that you have for us. Lord, use us this week just to reach people for you. No matter where we are, use this sermon, use this series this month to just better us so that we can be better for you. Lord, give us the opportunity to say yes this week to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.